Hey, welcome back. It's still the breakfast. And uh, what are the papers saying this morning? So off the press is what we're going to take now. So let's look at what Punch is saying to begin this off the press today. Remember, we'll be joined by our guest later on to x-ray some of these uh, things that we're talking uh, about or we're mentioning from the newspaper. So we begin with Punch newspaper. I'm not taking it according to how big the story is. I'm just starting from top to bottom. And okay. The very first story that does reminds me of that phrase, top to bottom. Buhari hands over 974 billion naira uncompleted road projects. You'll find out in, on uh, the punch, page 9. We also have Disco's backtrack on uh, tariff hike, await neck approval. World Bank OK's fresh $500 million loan for federal government. Those are headlines there on top of uh, the Punch newspaper. But the biggest headline there on Punch is Senate Minority Leader PDP Atiku set to clash with 5G governors or 5G, yeah, the 5G governors over Tambuwal. Atiku, a party man, will back PDP choice, says eight as Minority Leader emerges July 4. G5 backing Jaribe Autumn, eight insists. Lawmakers warn PDP on Sokoto ex-governor. <coughs> okay. Um, we also have custom CG decorated promises, technology-driven operations. And uh, SALA, federal government, declares Wednesday and Thursday public holiday. We do hope that you are going to have fun. We will not go on that. Uh, okay. Federal government declares holidays. Oshun con. Cancels free train ride. Oshun State cancels free train ride. And seven passengers, or Kada rider, die in Oyo clashes. And finally, uh, Tinubu returns today. May present ministerial list after Salah. Mm, watch away that list. <coughs> okay, we'll move from Punch to yet another newspaper. And this time it will be The Nation. The Nation newspaper is... Uh, Carrying the headline, seven pilgrims died of psychological challenges, says Nakon. Oh, pilgrims, seven of them died of psychological challenges. Then we also have, remember that is on the nation. We also have another headline here. Um, I'm trying to figure that out. X8, why Buhari didn't remove petrol subsidy and float the Naira? Uh, you will find that story on page 5 of the nation. Ibadan's kit maker remanded in prison. Automatic job for Lasso's best graduate. Mm, good news and bad news together at the same time. The biggest story on this, the nation, the biggest headline there is Disco's await next nod to increase electricity tariffs. Distribution firms backtrack on hike notification. Review not justified, said Yusuf. Okay. And then Ribadu CDS IG will secure Nigeria. That's what they're promising us. That is the National Security Advisor, Ribadu, assumes office. Ebetokun uh, raises special squad. Uh, we do hope it's not a return to NSAS. Now, floating of Naira in order, says Idika Kalu. Remember, Kalu Idika Kalu. A petrol subsidy no longer uh, desirable. Those are headlines that uh, we're ready to take. Uh, um, Okay, before we go, work halted on Lagos Ibadan Road. And then government appeals 5 billion naira Ararume judgment. Okay, those are the headlines from the Nation newspaper. We'll move now to another newspaper, and this time it will be the Guardian newspaper. The Guardian newspaper uh, leads with Muslim faithful grown as subsidy removal squeezes family budget. Um, that's on page six. Bleak festival is how the team did. And then, I delayed removal of petrol subsidy for Tinubu APC to win election, says Buhari. Mm. Confusion in power sector as discos hint at uh, 300 naira per kilo, or kilowatt rather, of electricity tariff. 300 naira per kilowatt of electricity. Okay, good. Now, group decries prevailing hardship in Nigeria. 
Ribadu takes over as NSA, vows to deepen security and stability. And despite Mba, Mba's order, Monday sit at home. Okay, despite Mba's order, Monday sit at home persists in Enugu. Remember, the governor said there was no more sit at home in Enugu, but it continues even with his order. Okay. Now, a final thing there from The Guardian is a very small line below, and it says, Nigeria, developing countries at risk of deglobalization. If you want to know more about that, you can read up on uh, The Guardian. Then the final newspaper we're taking this morning is Business Day. Business Day leads with businesses grown as checkpoints, illegal tolls on road inflate costs. Poor subsidy removal interventions can worsen inflation. That's according to experts. And finally, how weaker Naira could affect multinationals' finance input costs. Those are the headlines from Business Day that we're ready to take this morning. And Okay, so we're being joined by uh, Chris Kainde Wandu, member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK uh, here in Lagos State. Good morning, Chris. I'm fine this morning, very fine this morning. I hope you are as well. I am. Okay, very good. American is alive now. Yes, yes. I'm looking for where to go and eat uh, the salad meat. The, the, the salad meat is out of the roof. So <laughs> I wonder how many people can afford to buy salad meat um, around this time around. Okay. It is well. <laughs> well, uh, in the scripture, at least the Bible, I know that uh, there was a time God commanded them to eat uh, this kind of thing. And he said, if they cannot afford it, they should join hands. So maybe families will come together and do what they need to do. But exactly. Chris, yeah, That's but, what says. yeah. Uh, well, but let's just take a short break, a breather, and we'll be back to uh, dissect the headlines that we heard this morning, Chris. You're welcome back. Remember, Chris Kainde Wandu, member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK, is here with us uh, to talk on the headlines that we have seen this morning uh, on Off the Press. This is what we're doing right now. Chris, once again, uh, welcome to the program. Thank you very much for having me this morning. Yeah, so let's begin with um, not maybe a major headline on the punch, but uh, it's somewhere there. Every, almost every newspaper carried it uh, this morning. And that was the fact that the president, the former president, uh, Muhammad Buhari, said he delayed the removal of fuel subsidy and uh, some other things because he wanted APC to win election. So he knew that if he had removed fuel subsidy, they wouldn't have won the election. But uh, he kept it deliberately so that after the winning of the election, then all hell can let loose. What did you feel when you heard that headline, when you saw that headline? Breaking. You know, you look up and say, well, you have such story, you say, you try, well, well, you try, you try. <laughs> so let's, <laughs> let's leave it that you try, uh, very try. Um, but um, the part remains that uh, even the, uh, the election is still being disputed. Um, so and many still believe that that election was flawed irrespective of the outcome of the election. But um, I can declare the winner of the president. Um, the users are in court, and um, it is now there for the tribunals and the court to determine whether President um, Bola Tumibu actually um, won the election or not. But um, that is not the real. Don't forget also that there are so many issues that arose before that election. The issue of the redesigning of the new Naira Road was also a major problem um, by the former or suspended um, governor of the central bank, uh, uh, Godwin and Mephile. That in itself um, was a, a major factor. But the president coming out to say that uh, he waited um, for uh, the election for it. Uh, but it that's no news because there have been consistently, um, there have been stories and news about the removal of sources. Don't forget that um, it was supposed to be removed uh, some time in the past. Mm. Um, he delayed it. Um, after that, he delayed it again. And um, until the tail end, 
And um, it wasn't even that it was removed. Yes, they said that there was going to be a removal, but it was supposed to end at the end of June. Mm. He left uh, on May 29th. So it wasn't like if you say he removed it, it wasn't removed during his time. Yeah. He waited. Uh, it, it, it was supposed to be removed. It was the president elect that announced, formally announced the removal during his inauguration on May 29th. Mm. And that was when everything went loose. Um, that was when. Um, everything, as you say in uh, local palace, everything comes scatter, scatter. Um, but we, we knew that it was going to be inevitable. Everybody knew, and most practically everybody supported the removal of uh, the petrol subsidy. But the way and manner it was removed was what we had challenges because if the uh, the, the subsidy was supposed to have been waited uh, to last in June, how come that? From the from May 29, when that announcement was made, it was removed immediately, and that we have so many problems associated with it. Now, question has been asked as to what happened to the one month um, that was paid for something. Was it that 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 of June was not paid? If it was paid, who was it paid for? Then how come that the petrol stations, including NPC, reversed or changed the uh, pump price of fuel immediately? When well, this is supposed to last, those are some of the questions being asked. But um, it has been removed, um, and that is what it is for now. The NLC is still negotiating with uh, uh, with the federal government. But it seems that this has come to stay. Just also, just as we are having the hearing that in the next few days, 40, there are going to be forty percent increase on the uh, electricity tariff that we are going to pay almost as much as three hundred naira per kilowatt. Um, the Naira also has been, um, the Naira is also hitting the roof. It's almost about um, 800 to uh, $1 now. And the question I've always asked, how come that we're having all this at the same, at the same speed? Couldn't have, we need to have find a way of trying to uh, spread this so that the average Nigeria can be able to, uh, we can be able to, the federal government can push the effect of um, this. And, uh, don't forget that with all this increment, over 300 almost 300% increase in price of fuel, almost 40% um, increase in uh, um, electricity tariff. Not a single Naira has been added to the salary of the average Nigerian. Even the 30,000 Naira that's supposed to be minimum wage being paid um, by various organizational states. So many states have not been able to pay the 30,000 Naira that you can ask yourself, where how would be Nigerians be able to survive this onslaught for me? I don't think this is the right time for all this. We can be able to find a way of accountability without pushing Nigerians to the cliff. Yeah, you, you just mentioned something that salaries have not gone up and in spite of everything that is happening. And I keep wondering to myself, yes, um, subsidy is gone. And one of the things they tell us is that um, when subsidy was going on, we were, we were buying fuel, as it were, and also furnishing the needs of other countries. So that's the reason, after it has been removed, they found out that instead of maybe 60 million uh, liters used a day, it is now about 15 million. So now is the only time, in my thinking, that they have had data concerning the consumption of fuel in Nigeria, which means if they were sending, spending, let's say, 100 billion to buy petrol, now it might just be like 1 billion or 5 billion to buy this petrol to subsidize for the Nigerian populace. So why can that kind of a thing not be considered, even though we are clapping that subsidy has been removed? I, I can tell you, without, without mincing words, that the palliatives, the so-called palliatives, that will be given for the removal of subsidy will cost more than the subsidy. Will cost more than, if not the old subsidy, it will cost more than if they had thought about continuing it with a better data that they, than they have. So, like I said, I've been wondering aloud, why is that not even on the table at all? First and foremost, that data that they've always been writing is false. It's not true. 60 million, 63 million is not true. Don't forget that the former uh, controller general of the customs, um, uh, Ahmed Ali, questioned that data. That there is no way that we have been will be consuming about 63 million or we say about yeah, but that is the data they were using to siphon the money. Now they know yes, that it's wrong data. I, yes, I know. Yes, I understand you. 
I, I, I'm heading somewhere. Yeah. So what he's saying in essence is that that is what they are using. It's part of uh, the corruption within the system. Mm. Some people are just siphoning that money using that data to be able to mm. ferry and um, be able to um, steal as much as they could. Is a is a part. Let me give you a classical example. The same, you remember during the COVID, where there was restriction of movement for close to about um, three weeks to four, uh, four weeks in Nigeria. That same, when we were not moving, the same data was what they've been blind. Even when the vehicles are not moving on the road, mm. they still tell you that we are consuming about 63 million rest of it. was all those things we are just fallacy by those in government and within MPC. We were using that um, that to be able to steal us dry. And well, it has been removed. Uh, the something has been removed now. We said they said that it has come down to our consumption has come down to about 15 to 20 million uh, by day. And I totally agree with you that the difference um, it would have been used uh, as a party. But come to think of you, saw what happened during the COVID period and some of the uh, measures taken by the former government. Um, when you were talking about when the Minister of Humanitarian, uh, uh, what they call them now, humanitarian, whatever they call them, we are giving up palliatives running into trillions and trillions of naira. And you also saw the, 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 the trader money that the, the vice president was teaching that and the rest of them. All those we are just with of siphoning money. And the end of it all, how many Nigerians got those money? How many? They don't even have a clear data on the number of days we are banned. You know that that list was questioned by the National Assembly thoroughly. It got to the National Assembly, the House of Representatives, and the Senate questioned and said, most of these names that we are just branding that we are fictitious names with no address and the rest of them. So the palatial so palliative, which we have not even seen, which is still under discussion, they have not told us. They said, I will tell you what normally happens. We go into negotiation with NLC. They will now say they're going to buy 100 buses. That is what they normally do. They say they'll buy 100 buses. And they will not give 100 buses to NLC. Ask me how many 100 buses, how many people will be able to ferry. They will drop about 30 or 20 in Abuja, send 20 to Lagos, and distribute maybe one or two to various states in the, in the Federation. That is what they call parallel. Um, states, they will not touch salary because they know that most states will still not be able to pay those salaries, despite the fact that that is um, 30,000 um, 30, naira minimum wage that has been agreed over how many years now? Most they still can't be able to pay that. Then when you talk about uh, minimum, wage, um, uh, um, minimum wage, most often than not, you come to realize that, despite the fact that both the federal and state are not, if what will happen to the private sector? The private sector is facing serious challenges now. Most, most companies are closing down. Many people are being laid off. And I just remember vividly that just yesterday for instance, that Manufacturing Association of Nigeria came out to cry that this um, remove um, this forty percent increase uh, in um, electricity tariff and also the increase in price of fuel that is affecting the various um, um, manufacturing and various companies in Nigeria and most of them losing down because they cannot be able to cope. So while we are what we are trying to win with um, with the right. We're also losing with the left. There's so much poverty within the country now. People cannot afford to eat. Um, people are now trekking. If you go to the bus stop, I'm sure my brother, you see what happens in Lagos. When you are going home or every, you see the number of people at the bus stop and also see the number of people that trek. In fact, most organizations now have a device a means where they say their staff should come to work just about two times in a week because they cannot be able to afford the luxury of taking transportation to come to work. That is where we are now. And I represent that travel that is coming back today. I hope that we just sit and be able to analyze it and be able to come up with a solution as quickly as possible. Nigerians are being pushed. This is not the best time to be in Nigeria, as far as I'm concerned. Oh, well, um, a lot of us are very askance about uh, uh, these palliative. No, a lot of people are not comfortable about it. Just do the needful. If fuel. If uh, fuel is affordable now that we know a data so, so low, uh, maybe you should reconsider this uh, removal and do the needful based on the data that you have and try to monitor it well. Because have you also, have because you, have this, you also, have you also realized that we, uh, uh, have you also realized that in all this discussion, nobody is talking about either reviving our existing refineries yeah. or building new ones. Nobody is talking about it. 
this whole the whole indices is not based on importation. Importation. Yeah. No board, they have not even, had the even Dangote. No, I have not had those men to say anything about the refineries. Even Dangote's refinery that was commissioned uh, a few weeks ago, exactly. uh, he yes. has been given license to import fuel. He has yes. been given license to import <laughs> petroleum products. Okay. <laughs> He's so funny, my brother. All right. Uh, yes. We'll move from there. But like, Nigeria is struggling and always complaining about education. And now um, the worrisome thing is in a do state, uh, workers were asked to stay home for two days at least in a week and come to work three days. And that included teachers as well. So schools will now be opening for three days when we need more time to study. Schools now will be opening three days in a week. Even for us, even for us, it also came out with that, uh, it's, it's with that uh, new directive on podcast. Let them just tell us to have home schooling so that if parents stay home more nowadays, they should teach their children as best they could. Okay, uh, let's move to another thing. Um, we see that uh, the discos are backtracking, um, on paper at least, that they are not going to do the price hike, the tariff hike, uh, because they need some approvals here and there, and the announcements were not there. But it seems as if this tariff has been hiked without our knowing. The announcement was just a formality. So backtracking, where are they backtracking to? Do you think they are being honest with us? In the past, um, close to about uh, three or four years now, I will tell you that we had over 186 percent hike in electricity tariff, about 180 percent hike. That is what the Manufacturer Association of it. And this hike has been done without you and I knowing. Mm -hmm. They do it on a monthly basis. What you do, the only way you know is that if you have been recharging, if you have been recharging your, uh, your electricity, mm -hmm. yeah. and you go and, pay and buy 10,000 naira. And you get uh, let's say 120 um, uh, units uh, last month. If you go back this month and pay the same 10,000, if you look at the units, you will see that it has reduced. It must have reduced to about eight or 87. That is where you get to know that the, the, the increase has been because they have this systematic way of increasing. In fact, they, are, they, they said that they are going to systematically be increasing it on a daily uh, or a monthly basis, and they have not been informing Nigeria. So. All this um, uh, noise about 40% of it, there is a way that they can remove it without you knowing. All you need to do is just go and buy it and you just realize that you have a lesser unit. And the government is not even helping at all. The government is not helping matters. It is like we are just on a free fall. The, the, the NERC, uh, N-E-R-O-C, have not come out to fully tell us what this is all about. They have already said, the, the this said they are going to increase. But now, because of the shout and the noise being made by Nigeria, they say, okay, we are waiting for... I saw a release by the uh, Babuja Electricity uh, uh, Distribution Company that, okay, uh, we are going to wait on night. But I can tell you briefly that that increase is going to take effect from the 1st of July, whether they got neck approval or no neck approval. That is what is going to happen. The percentage is what I cannot say, uh, talk about. Maybe ten percent, maybe fifteen percent, maybe twenty, or it may even be the same forty percent they are talking about. But what you're going to see that nobody is talking about improving the service. You, nobody is telling us about increasing the capacity to be able to distribute. We are still we are still trading between four thousand and five thousand megawatts of electricity, a country with over two hundred million people. When some states in South Africa. Just one state is doing about 10 or 20, 20,000 megawatts. Just in South Africa here, we are talking about 5,000 for a population of 200 million people. No single, the, 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 the government, last government promised that on a yearly basis that they were going to uh, increase to about 10,000 megawatts. You remember that promise? Mm. There yeah. was no single, that, single, single megawatt that was added to the national grid by the past administration. They, what they meant is what they left for eight years. Just like the way they did uh, in, in, in the petroleum sector, where we are promised that they were going to build refineries. No, no refinery was built. Even the one that they meant, they couldn't maintain. And we placed and we put some premium to spend this about 11 trillion naira to be able to uh, turn around the, um, um, the, 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 um, the uh, the refineries are not a single petroleum has been refined. So the same thing is the, 
We are talking now, they've been talking about increasing, increasing. You know, I said this time with that number. That the problem, I, in as much as I don't base this government or the last one, I am going to blame the good Lord Jonathan government that privatized the electricity sector and hand over this uh, elect electricity company to incompetent individuals, to people that have no capacity to be able to do what they're supposed to do. And just, and apart from that, even after the selling it to them, we, we are also subsidizing some of this electricity. In fact, billions and billions of naira we are even paid to them for them to be able to maintain the services. Our money was paid to people that fought over the discos and jenkos. Where in the world is that done? So that is what we're having now. On a daily basis, they will tell you that, oh, the tariff, Nigeria's tariff is the lowest in the world. And I used to add, they will start comparing to what is paid in South Africa, what is paid in the United States. And the question I've always asked, what is the per capita income of a Nigerian compared to somebody in the U.S.? Tell me. The minimum wage in Nigeria is 30,000 Naira. My brother, that is less than $50 in the U.S. $50. That is the minimum wage of an average. $50 is what some people make in an hour in the U.S. So when you start making those comparisons, it does not make sense to me. Mm. Okay, uh, well, our time is running out. Just briefly now, um, I would have loved to talk about a PDP and Atiku clashing over uh, with the 5G governors over Tambuwal as minority leader. But um, if you can touch it, fine. But now what I want to say or ask is uh, we're respecting back the president today and people are saying ministerial list may, may follow uh, after Salah. Salah has uh, two days have been declared, maybe so Friday or by Monday, we should have ministerial list. If the rumors are true, that could happen. What are you expecting in that ministerial list? We can wrap all in, 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 uh, about three stories in two, uh, one minute. One uh, is the fact that um, airports have been resumed, about 10 airports have been renamed. And I'm sure you are, you are aware of that. More than that. Uh, yeah. More yes. Than that. It, Yes, yeah, you, you saw it more yes, than that. Yes. They are renamed. Yes, that is that has been confirmed. Two is also the issue of the PDP and the TICO and the district. The fact remains that Stambua is a ranking um, member of the National Assembly and he was a former Speaker of the House of Representatives. If they feel find that uh, he's capable to be the minority, that are all well and good. Um, PDP should be able to put his ass together. It has always lost election, which ordinary probably to have won, but for the big crisis within the parties and the G5 and so forth, G5 and the weekend rest of them, I think this is just the time for them to shift it up and find a way coming together and put their ass together and see themselves as a formidable opposition. What we need in Nigeria is a formidable opposition that can give the APC government a run for their money and speak for the people. We don't want all these big greens between G5 or G7 or G20 or whatever they call themselves. We want a formidable opposition in Nigeria now that can be able to fight and speak for Nigerians. Then the president coming back, yes, um, he's coming back today uh, after, after a trip to Paris and London. And, and we hear that in the ministerial list in, in the combat. Don't forget that there's a time frame put to that, unlike before, unlike the former president that took almost six months to be able to come up with it. This president has about, I think, 60 days to be able to put his um, ministerial list and send it to the National Assembly, uh, the senior assistant to the National Assembly. We are looking out for situations where we can have technocrats, people that can de deliver, not just a yes man in political uh, politicians who will just come and don't know. We are in a critical period, and anybody that is appointed a minister now should be able to hit the ground running. There are a lot of things happening that we don't even know what to do. The health sector, the education sector, the energy sector. Even, uh, even those that are speaking for the government. So I hope that the president will be able to come out. We've seen what he did with the service team. Everybody's happy. Well, happy. It's more like a national spread. And we put the right people in the right place. I hope that that will also happen with the... Uh, with the place. We started hearing some names. But you know in Nigeria, there are so many names to be branded and branded. Until we see the list, let us wait and see what is going to be. Okay. Well, that will be all for uh, this uh, segment of the show. Uh, Chris Wandu, we'd like to thank you so much for coming to the show and being a part of it and helping us dissect these headlines. Thank you very much for having me. Okay. We've been talking with Chris Kende Wandu, member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK. He, uh, he spoke to us from Lagos State here. And the show still continues, but we'll take a break now. When we return, we'll begin our first hot topic 
and we'd hope that you'll still be there. Stay with us.